Good evening. I'm ATA Policy Director Sakya Marar, reporting from a top secret underground ATA location. I'm here to tell you guys that the rumors and conspiracy theories you've heard are completely correct. The Australian Taxpayers Alliance is in fact an organization with a nefarious agenda to make sure you and your family keep more of your own money, have better living standards, pay lower bills for your electricity, and have a better life in a more prosperous and free Australia. So I'm here right now with our ATA External Affairs Director, Katerina, and with Joanne. Now, Joanne got her start uh, as a summer associate with us uh, over the weekend. Joanne is a year 12 student. Uh, and Joanne uh, recently made the news because she wrote an article for the Daily Telegraph on why she decided not to join her fellow classmates in the hashtag student strike for climate. So Joanne, tell us a little bit about how it all happened and what things have been like for you since. So I've always been quite politically aware. And so when I first heard about the strike and how it was regarding climate change, I was like, okay, fair. Like, you know, it's a bunch of students that I actually seem like they're gonna start getting more politically um, aware about things. So I was like, okay, great. But um, when I was looking at what they were advocating for in terms of the policies, and when I started looking at behind which organization that was running the protest, um, they were advocating for policies like 100% renewables, and they described mining, and like just the mining sector as like wrecking projects. That's when I started to realize, like, started to question whether like they actually, like the students that went out to protest actually, protest actually understood what they were advocating for, especially the economic implications of those policies. Absolutely, that's good. Um, so Joanne, um, you were featured in the Daily Telegraph. You had an article uh, published there which you wrote on your experience and they interviewed you as well. Um, tell us what, what it's like, what it's been like for you since then because we understand that I'm sure not everyone at your school was particularly happy that you mm -hmm. took a different line. Yeah, so I just wanted to put out there that um, my views are definitely the minority in terms of what I think, especially at my school. Um, but the thing was that I didn't expect them to be quite as harsh in terms of their reaction to my article, especially since like my stance was like, you know, don't wear steel, don't break the law. That's really the part of education stance as well in the entire thing. But because um, of how my school is and how I personally feel like how it's, <coughs> personally I feel like it's skewed towards the left, the reaction that I got was quite harsh and quite cold and I really didn't expect that from them. And that's who were teachers? Yeah, teachers and also like especially classmates as well. Mm -hmm. Um like my personal stance is always like, you know, if the if the other type, if the other side can say something about it and can have articles produced, can have their school name and can have like, you know, the uniforms like passed across the papers, like why can't I? But um, the fact that you know, I personally got blasted for just really just sharing my own views was something quite surprising. Mm -hmm. So um, you recently were on a uh, you featured on television. Why did you decide you wanted to stay in school on Friday? I just think that we need to have a much more informed debate about this issue. And I just don't think a bunch of kids who don't understand the impacts of what they're advocating for, waving around posters, telling the Prime Minister to go F himself, is the most, <laughs> is the best, is the informed debate that we need in this country. Uh, so, and you were on a radio debate with one of the protesters, I believe. Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit about how those experiences were for you. Yeah, it's been great so far. Um, it's been, it's, it's really interesting um, actually having a proper debate about someone about the, like, about the issue without like, you know, getting into like a, a incredibly heated um, sort of situation, which I sometimes get at, at school, mm -hmm. because at least with the pro climate strike, she, I felt like she actually knew like where she stood with the issue. But even then with the debate, I just felt like, like I mentioned in my article, like they, they're really lacking like the economic um, arguments for what they're doing. They really don't understand the economic implications of what they're advocating for. So Joanne, you did a summer internship with us. Do you want to explain sort of what you were doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Mm -hmm. So um, one of the two main focus areas that I did during my internship was research and writing. Um, those two areas are areas that I'm most passionate about, so I was very glad that I got to do that here. And it is here at the ATA where I got to develop my own ideas 
and where I got taught how to refine those ideas and how to condense those through writing in op-eds or media releases. Um, these opportunities I don't feel like you get anywhere else really and I feel like doing internship here is incredibly valuable especially if you want to develop your writing and research skills. Mm -hmm. So um, you're in year 12 now and you've obviously had the chance to come out with your views and have a say but what's next for you? You know, wh where do you see yourself career-wise? What are your goals ultimately? Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely very, very passionate about politics and I do hope to work in politics one day, especially in the research aspects of politi pol politics. So whether that be being a policy advisor or working at a department, I'd love to do, that, to do that in hopes that I'll make lives better for everyone. Um, yeah. Would you run for office someday? Um, that's something for very long term in the future, but um, if I do ever do get the opportunity, I would love to. So Joanne, if you were Prime Minister for the day, what are two things you would implement? Um, two things I'm really passionate about is energy and also education. So with energy, <coughs> I feel like we really need to look at legalising nuclear power, especially since it's one of the cleanest sources of energy. And I feel like if we were actually serious about fighting climate change, we really need to start looking at uranium as a source of energy. Um, secondly, education. I'm personally in the current education system right now and I feel the brunt of it. So personally, I wish to see a much more balanced education curriculum. Yeah. Cool. cool. Awesome. So every year, the ATA takes on a number of research associates and interns, just like Joanne, uh, mainly from university, sometimes from high school as well. Uh, and the idea is that we are able to give them um, the skills and the opportunities they need to really bring their ideas out so they can join the conversation and make a difference in this country. Um, and with your continued support, we can keep giving young people like Joanne these sorts of opportunities so they can hopefully, um, I think, you know, we have a little more confidence in her right now than she does, <laughs> be the future leaders of this country and maybe even the world. Who knows? So, yeah. So thanks again, Joanne, for interning with us and for being here with us today as well. Thank you so much for having me. It's been absolutely amazing this entire journey. And subscribe to T-Series. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs>